putting it in some of our daily UIs. And I read an article about this the other day. I thought it would be helpful to share. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is taking icons out of Iconify when we want to make something larger. So for example, the thing that I was talking to someone about today was the chat bubble. And, <clears throat> and they're just grabbing it and making it the size they need. And I wanted to walk you through what the article said about this, why this isn't necessarily um, scalable, and what we can do instead and show you another option. So as you can see, when you get it bigger, and I mean, we can really take this up large and maybe make it a crazy shape. And you can see that the curves right here are not gonna be as elegant or professional looking when you have it at a size that the designer actually didn't intend it to be. And so designers are designing for a certain size and when it's coming to icon icons, it's usually something under 24 by 24 pixels. And um, if they're intending to design something larger, they're gonna actually design it from scratch to be larger so that it maintains that professional um, look that you don't get when you're just sizing something up that was meant to be really small. Um, another example of this is looking at the iPhone icons. Like I uh, zoomed in on a celebration one the other day and it was really crazy how different it looked when it was really big. So another reason this doesn't work is let's say you're having a chat conversation and this one has one line and then this one, this bottom one has like three lines. Um, right here, you can see that the curves are different. Um, and in terms of development, that's not going to be something that developers are going to be able to scale. Um, and then employees are going to see this and um, just know that you ha need to develop your skills more. And so I thought this would be helpful going into unit three, just to have one more thing under our belt. So I'm going to delete this one, size this back down a little bit kind of keep it funky so we can see and zoom in so I can kind of see the pixels I'm working with. All right, so this is where I would start. I would grab this rectangle and just create a little rectangle here. And I would go over here to the right panel to the corner radius and adjust this. I'm just gonna guess 15, all right. <clears throat> And you can see that the curve is already looking a little bit more professional. And remember in stand up, we talked about if you triple click something, it creates, um, it shows you the vector lines of the object. What I would do is I would take this pen tool. And if you are in the vector view, you'll see this little dot. Moving around, you can hover over the edge of the different sides. And this is automatically filling in one in the middle in case we wanted to do that. But for this example, we're gonna start over here on the side and just kind of move over. And since I know I'm gonna pull that little um, triangle down, I'm gonna go ahead and start with three points and um, click escape to get that little line disappear and move back over to the move option. And you'll find that uh, modern industry standard is you're not going to normally include one of these little dip downs in a chat conversation. Um, usually it's just going to be a rectangle. Um, but if you were sketching something for like a prototype or like a user um, walkthrough and wanted to create a bubble for that, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to do that. So um, you can see it's adding that corner radius to these three points. And I'm gonna go ahead and, whoop, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna double click this one, or click it, hold shift and click all three, and come over here and just put that back to zero. Click enter. And now we already have a better looking chat box. Now, if you want it to, it to curve to the left, this is how you would go ahead and do that. And actually at this point, if I was going to do that, because this is a back and forth conversation, I would exit out of that vector mode. I would duplicate it. And that way um, I can adjust where this thing is. Or another option is to go ahead and make this and then um, mirror it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about later on. 
Okay, so I'm going back into the, back into the vector mode by triple clicking it and I'm <clears throat> going to take this uh, bend tool and click just the main bottom one. There we go. Go back to the move tool. I'm not very good at hotkeys, so if somebody wants to teach a lesson on that, I would super appreciate it. I know them, but I just can't remember them. I'm good at making it a habit. My husband would roll his eyes if he saw me. Um, so you come over here and see how it's mirroring angle, and you can also mirror angle and length. Uh, mirroring angle and length, when you're hand drawing something, if you um, choose that, it's going to make it just look a little bit cleaner. But in this case, we actually want no mirroring because we want to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to click just this one, and I'm going to drag it up here. Now, if it like starts doing crazy things, maybe you have this selected instead of just this little handle. So click out of that and then click the handle. And so you can just kind of drag it up and have a little subtle um, shape there. And already you have a much better chat bubble than what was going on here. And it's custom, so you can even say that you know how to do that. And then if you wanted to kind of create a little bit more shape here, you can drag it around. All right, so one of the other things you can do, because you have this, let's say you have multiple people in a conversation. This isn't necessarily for Messenger. Let's say you're drawing out um, a, um, like a storyboard and you have like different little cartoon characters having a conversation. Um, now you can select that and you can just like click. I'm clicking the right arrow button just so I don't mess anything up here, but I can kind of move it around. And now we have one in the middle. I'm going to go back, undo put that back where it was and then um, you could have dragged that all the way over to the right hand side or what I was saying before I duplicated this and I'm realizing I probably should have waited to duplicate it take this duplicate it drag it down and right click and you can flip it horizontally and now you have a conversation on both sides looks kind of funny. I maybe would have adjusted exactly how I did the little pull down part, um, but you can kind of mess around with that and get to a point that you feel like it's better. I'm thinking maybe the problem is this needs to be like over here lining up with this. This These two points need to line up a little bit more. And I'm just dragging this handle down. And I'm drawing this handle, make it look a little bit better. And let's see what that looks like when I mirror it. But you kind of see this is already a better option. It's more scalable. The one thing that is uh, not going to scale, yeah, I think that already looks better on both sides. Um, but general, like I said, if you're making um, a mock-up, like you're making a design for a website or for an app, you're not even going to usually use these at this point. That's um, not a current trend, but you never know. You really never know when you're going to need that. So um, you might want to add uniqueness somehow, and now you can be extra unique. And then what I was going to show you is if I'm holding down my shift just to lose, to keep that um, same ratio, or if I make it look really big. And then I can make one really small. Um, you're not getting that like weirdness here with that little angle. And that's mostly maintaining its shape. The only thing I was going to point out is that the uh, corner radius is changing. And that's just because it's um, in ratio to the size. Uh, so it's showing like a more severe curve because five pixels right here is a bigger curve than five pixels here. So five pixels is much different. Um, I don't know the scientific way to explain that. And I actually don't know the best way to size that up. So maybe someone else can chime in here and add a little bit about that. But now you know how to make your um, custom uh, chat bubbles. Let me know if you have any questions or if there is anything that didn't um, 
I didn't explain and you want me to go into more depth. All right, have a good night, guys.